Hey guys, it's Sebastian from SkyComp Solutions, and today I'm going to show you how to create a live event in Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams has some great new features um, that they've just added in 2021, well, near the end of 2020, 20, the date doesn't matter. The point is we've got great new features to work with. Uh, so let's jump in and I'll show you now. So I have two laptops in front of me here and I'm just gonna show you how to set up a live event. So we're gonna go to first, normally we just pop up in the activity feed. We've opened up Microsoft Teams here and we're just gonna go down to the calendar uh, menu icon on the left hand side. And then we're gonna go to, uh, there's a little drop down arrow beside the new meeting uh, button. And we're just gonna scroll down to live event. There's only two options. You can schedule a meeting, um, which we show you how to do in another tutorial, which I'll link in the description below. But for now, I'm gonna show you how to do the live event feature. So we'll hit that. And then uh, this new live event panel pops up. It asks you a title, location, when the event is, when the time zone is, and some details that you want to add. So I'm just gonna do, for this purpose, tutorial event. And the location is, of course, Skycomp Studios. Now, you can actually type in a, a building location or an address into the location uh, panel there. We don't have any setup with uh, Teams right now, so we're just going to add Skycomp Studios. Uh, we're going to say the event is starting in about five minutes. Sure, that works for me. And so now we want to find out who our presenters are and we want to invite them now. So I'm going to invite Wedge. Wedge, there you are. And that is this laptop right here. So I can control and show you what the view is like from a presenter point of view. And we don't need to provide any info because we're just doing a tutorial. And we'll go next. So you have your organization wide, so anyone within your organization can view and join this live event. And then you have public, so that's anyone in the world with the link can join and view the live event. So for now, we're going to go people and groups because I don't want my company, or we don't want people from Skycomp accidentally joining this meeting in the middle of the tutorial. It wouldn't make any sense. So we're just going to add one person, we're going to add myself. Hooray. And then how do you want to produce this event? So this is a question that I've dealt with a lot coming from a video production background. Lots of people just want to be able to manage their own events. They don't want to deal with an external production company dealing with all the ex external software and other things like that. So if you're just wanting to do this event internally, you don't want to bring in a separate software or figure any of the other details out, my suggestion is to go through the Teams application. They make it very easy for you and there's lots of options there. The other thing that you can do is use an external app or device. So this is when you would want to look into hiring an external production company that has this software available and that can produce this event for you. That means another feed from another device is gonna be coming into your Microsoft Teams account and, and you'll be able to present things in a different way. So there's a lot of different options um, when it comes to an external device. On Teams' website, you can go and view which applications are supported and which aren't. Another trick that lots of people don't know is if maybe you don't wanna hire a production company, but you wanna make it look a little bit nicer, you wanna add maybe a broadcast camera or a DSLR through a capture card through your device, you can go through the Teams production route, and when you select your device that you're using as your camera, you can select the capture card or a different audio device that is a little bit higher quality. So you can still make a higher quality broadcast without hiring an external production company, and you can make it work through the Teams live events application. So now that we've been through all of that, we're just gonna make sure to also check off that we want a Q&A, so we want the Q&A feature to be available to our presenters, attendees, and our producer of the event. We want that available. 
So if you plan to go through Microsoft Teams, there are a few settings that you have to look through and make sure you check off if you want them enabled for your specific live event. This being, you can record, you can have a recording available to attendees. So you can record the event as a producer, you can record the event as a presenter, but that recording might not be available to the attendees that are just joining and watching this live event. If you want this to be available to your attendees specifically, you have to make sure to check that box. I'm gonna uncheck it, because I only need one copy of the recording. I don't need to send it to all the attendees in this tutorial event. The next thing is your attendee engagement report. This is how many chats there are, what they're saying in their chats, and it saves all that information for you and spits it out in, a, in, a, in an Excel or a document. And, it, and you can read through that and know what went on in that meeting. Maybe you were presenting, maybe you're the producer and you didn't have really time to read through all the chats. So you can go back and read those later. So I'm gonna, that's really helpful to have. I'm gonna leave that checked. And then the question and answer. So this usually comes unchecked, but checking it off gives you a, quest, a question and answer feature in the side panel. Um, along with chat, so it's separate. It's two separate things. There's a Q&A feature and there's a chat function. The Q&A feature allows attendees to ask questions and presenters and producers to answer those questions or make announcements. So it's a really helpful feature to have. You can see that I have another, a couple other ones grayed out here. There's captions. You can send captions to attendees. We don't want to do that for this tutorial purpose. There's no point. And Recording available to producers and presenters is grayed out. So that's always checked off. RRT admin has set it up so that no matter who's producing or presenting this event, they're always gonna get the recording. So let's go ahead and schedule this event. So you'll, you'll now see that the event has showed up in the calendar. You'll also notice um, that if you have any attendees that joined this meeting or that you sent they will get an email notification, and I'll show you that on this computer here. We'll just open up Outlook. So you'll notice that we got an invitation. So this link will allow any user that gets it to easily join uh, this event. But we're gonna go back to the producer computer. We're gonna double click on our event and you have a couple of options here as well. You can click and cancel the meeting whenever you want, or the live event, sorry, it's not a meeting. You can join it. So right now, people can join to it, but they're seeing nothing, they're seeing a blank screen. Um, you can also get an attendee link. So if you forgot to invite someone as an attendee, you can send them this link and they'll be able to join. You can also hit edit again and change any setting, invite an extra presenter if you want, and then just easily hit update. So there are lots of different options. And once you hit schedule event, it is not over. You can still definitely change things and update things and make sure it's going to work correctly for you. So let's again, let's double click on that. And we have a join event link. You can also copy this and forward that. But we're just going to join the event. So this is what the live event interface looks like in Microsoft Teams. You can see it has a little countdown clock. It has how many attendees are in. And right now it's showing you that it's pre-live. So we actually haven't gone live yet because to go live, you have to add content to the queue side and then send it live to the live event side. So if you're not familiar with this concept that Teams has created here, this is very similar to a normal broadcast production of preview and program. So you have a preview monitor where something is going to go to air going or live, and you have your live or air or program monitor of what the audience is actually seeing. So these two, this, so this concept is very good to understand. Um, and if you have a moment, to play around in the Microsoft Live, just create a, a, a random event, a random live event, play around in it, understand it so that when you go to host it, you know what's going on. So this has been a quick overview on how to set up a Microsoft Teams live event. If you wanna learn how to use the live event interface, go over to this video here. 
If you want to watch more videos on Microsoft Teams, you can click over here. And if you like what SkyComp is doing, hit subscribe right here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.